more than welcome to unmute your microphone if you have any questions um, that you would like to ask and we would be happy to pause and answer those questions for you. Um, so um, starting a little with a little bit of information about what career readiness is and um, and um, how the Career Development Center and how you can um, prepare yourself for life after college. Um, and basically career readiness is just um, uh, having the skills and experiences that will prepare you to transition from college into post-graduation success. Um, ideally, you know, you're defining that success for yourself and you're able to decide um, what it is that you want your next step to be, whether that be graduate school, professional school, or um, a job, maybe a year of, um, you know, volunteering or, you know, going into study abroad or something along those lines or um, the Peace Corps, I meant to say, not study abroad. Um, and being able to articulate your skills um, and being able to effectively articulate your skills is a big part of successful job searching. And some of the different ways that you can do this is by gaining and developing your knowledge and skills. Um, you have to have the skills so that you can talk about them effectively. So um, you're getting skills through your classes and through your experiences, part-time jobs, uh, academic projects, volunteer work, extracurricular activities. Um, there are all of these different opportunities to gain and develop skills um, and then being able to identify those skills and talk about them effectively. Um, you are also want to kind of understand what your values and interests are and um, how those values and interests inform your career decisions. So what kind of um, workplace do you want to be a part of? What kind of work do you feel like you would enjoy doing and would be fulfilling for you? Um, we want that job, that opportunity that you have after college to be a good motivational fit. Um, and then making and leveraging connections, you're able to connect with so many people at UTA, um, classmates, colleagues, faculty members, staff members. Um, there are so many people that can be a valuable resource to you, um, can help you and be a champion for you as you're going through your time here at UTA, and also um, can be a good net part of your network to help you move forward um, in your career, or in your post-graduation success goals. And then making, planning and managing your career trajectory um, or your career path um, just means that you know how to look for a job, you know how to negotiate or evaluate job offers and negotiate your salary, um, and that you can do that not just for your first job after college, but for every job that you have uh, after that. Um, so that's just a little bit about um, career readiness and kind of falls in line with what we're talking about today um, when we're talking about job search best practices. So let's talk a little bit about the job search process. And um, one of the things that I always like to show is this um, kind of this flow, this traditional flow of what a job search process looks like. Um, and I, I'm sure you can see on the screen, but just in case I'm going to read these items out to you. Um, and then if you have any uh, comments, questions, um, anything that you'd like to share about this experience um, or th these uh, the, the job search process, then please feel free to share that. Um, so obviously with your job search process, um, you start by submitting applications. Usually you're looking for jobs online um, and there's a, an application that needs to be completed, um, perhaps with a resume and a cover letter uh, attached as well. And then um, after you've submitted applications, your first step is generally going to be some kind of a phone interview or a virtual interview of some kind. Um, it's possible that they call it like a pre-screen interview or a phone screen or something along those lines. Um, so by show of hands, how many of you have um, had at least one phone interview in your uh, job search process? OK, I know I would be raising my hand, so my hand is raised. So I see a couple of people raising their hands um, that they've had to do a phone screen or a, a phone interview as part of their interview. A lot of times nowadays it might be not a phone. It might be actually just a video or virtual interview. And then um, the second interview is generally an on-site interview where you would be 
perhaps interviewing with multiple people, maybe different groups of people like the team that you would be working with and people from HR and maybe, you know, having to interview with different people at different times. There may be a tour involved um, of the facility or the site, um, maybe an, a, a meeting about benefits or maybe some kind of an assessment or something along those lines that you would have to do as well. And then after that, um, you'll receive an offer if they've selected you for that position. There will be a little bit of negotiation, um, and then you will sign a final offer letter, and um, that is your signal that you're an employee of that organization, and they're making preparations for you to start your job. Um, does anybody have any questions about this process? Feel free to type them in the chat or like I said, unmute your microphone and and just a ask the question. I'm sorry, I've got the hiccups all of a sudden. OK, no questions so far, so I'll just go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, so the average job search takes approximately six to eight months. And one of the reasons why I feel like that's, well, there's two reasons why I think that's um, important information for you to know. Um, one is that you want to make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of time to conduct the job search. Um, you don't want to say, I want an internship um, starting in May, but it's almost April and you haven't even started looking yet. Um, so you want to give yourself plenty of time to do your job search. Um, for some majors, like accounting majors, for example, some of these uh, firms will recruit a year in advance. So the spring 23 recruiting season is for spring 24 interns. Um, so you definitely want to give yourself at least a year, if not more, to start to do that job search. And the other reason why I think it's important to know that is that um, I want to for you to to know that if it's taking a little bit longer than you thought it would, that you're probably in the norm. Um, and that there doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. I mean, we can certainly take a look at that and maybe um, identify some things that can be improved or changed, um, but it just takes time. And um, and that is frustrating and stressful as a job seeker, but um, it it's just part of the process. So um, how do you get your job search started? Um, obviously, the first thing you want to do is create your materials. Um, make sure that you have, you know, your resume and your cover letter ready to go. Um, now, I say that, but you do want to tailor your resume and your cover letter for the different jobs that you'd be applying for. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works in just a moment. But um, you want to have at least a general resume and general cover letter that you can edit and adapt for the different jobs that you're applying for, because um, you don't want to have to start from scratch right when you see your dream job posting online, right? That's, you know, um, that's a really hard time to just get these things started. So make sure you have all of your materials ready. Ready. If there's anything else that you feel like you need as part of your job search or your search for um, application, ap applying to graduate school or anything, you know, letters of recommendation, transcripts, um, references, any uh, materials, maybe you want to have a portfolio or you need to have samples of your work, um, anything that you think that you might need to gather and have ready to submit. Um, to a potential employer or to a grad school application, you want to make sure that you have that ready. Um, and then identify the tools that you want to use in your job search. Um, how many of you have an online job search tool that you really like? I see no hands raised and no comments being made in the chat. So think about it. Um, and if you have one that you'd like to recommend, go ahead and type it in the chat. Some of the other people that are in the meeting today might really appreciate some suggestions. And um, LinkedIn, yeah, LinkedIn is a great one. Yeah, LinkedIn is a really good resource. And it's a great networking tool, but it is also a great place to find job postings. Um, I, I would definitely recommend LinkedIn. And then um, make sure that you're connecting with others. Um, we're going to talk about it in, in a little bit more detail later, but um, networking is such an important part of your job search. 
So let's start with the general materials that you will need, starting with your resume. Um, we have lots of assistance with resumes. In the College of Business, you have the opportunity to utilize VMOC to help you to get your resume uh, created, um, which is really helpful for you because, you know, there's a template in there that you can use and, and you can have your resume evaluated by AI. The Career Development Center is also here to help you with your resume. You can stop by our office between um, one and four, Monday through Friday to get your resume reviewed on the spot by a career coach. Um, we also have a virtual uh, uh, resume critique submission form through Handshake that you can utilize if you'd rather just get your resume critiqued um, and emailed back to you. Um, but really, ultimately, your resume is your highlight reel. It is an opportunity for you to share with others um, what it is that you feel your strengths are and what you have to offer for the different types of jobs that you would be applying for. So some pretty important details are, are things like being consistent, making sure that your uh, formatting is clean and reader friendly. It does not need to be fancy or um, have a lot of color or other other design elements on it in order for it to be uh, a good readable resume. In fact, the, you want a more simple format. It's easier for it to be scanned into applicant tracking systems that way, and it's easier for someone who's reading your resume to be able to follow the flow of information. Uh, make sure your email handle is professional. Um, you can use your Mavs account if you want to, but just keep in mind that you don't get to keep that forever after you graduate. Um, Make sure your font is easy to read. 10 to 14 point um, is probably the size range that you want to be in. And then you want to make sure that it's a standard readable font. Don't go with anything too fancy or anything like that. Um, you know, use your formatting elements sparingly, bullet points, underlining, bold, italics, things like that. Um, Remember to tailor your resume for the job. So one of the things that I would recommend is you have this generic resume or this general resume, and then you have job description in front of you. And I would compare your resume with the job description. What are you seeing in the description of the role or the tasks that you would be performing? And how can you incorporate that into your resume? What keywords are they using? What action words are they using? Um, how can you tailor your resume so that they can see why you meet the qualifications for the position? Um, you don't have to put every job you've ever had. So your experiences, your skills can come from work experiences, um, extracurricular activities, um, academic projects. You know, there's lots of ways that you can show your skill sets. So kind of decide what you think your best qualities or qualifications are and focus on those on your resume. Um, make sure that you're getting it proofread, proofread it yourself, get other people to look at it, just to make sure that there isn't just a small error, a misspelled word, or anything like that. Um, and then obviously you want to keep your resume up to date. Um, don't forget to check it maybe once a semester at least um, to make sure that there aren't any new projects that you'd want to add to your resume or any new information that you would like to share. Does anybody have any questions about, oh, fonts that would be recommended? Um, yeah, Calibri or Arial Zippor is correct. You know, Times New Roman is okay too. Just make sure that it's a standard reader friendly font. So anything that would be standard on a Microsoft Word, uh, you know, program, um, that would be what I would recommend, um, you know, and then make sure that you download it as a PDF and if at all possible, you know, keep it as a PDF when you're uploading it. Any other questions about resumes? So here's some attributes that employers have said that they're seeking on a resume. And I know this is a really long list and a lot of bullet points. Um, hopefully you're on a computer and you can have a computer screen, but if you're on your phone, this might be really hard to read. So I'll read them out quickly um, so that you can, um, so that you can, know what they are. Um, they survey employers every year, the National Association of Colleges and Employers. Um, every year they survey employers on what uh, attributes they're looking for. And this is the, the list um, for this year. It's problem solving skills, ability to work in a team, strong work ethic, analytical and quantitative skills, communication skills written, technical skills, initiative, detail oriented, 
communication skills, verbal, um, computer skills, flexibility and adaptability, leadership, interpersonal skills, relates well to others, organizational ability, strategic planning skills, creativity, tactfulness, friendly, outgoing personality, entrepreneurial skills, risk taker, fluency in a foreign language. Those are the top skills. Now, not every job is looking for every one of those skills. And you might look at that list and say, I don't have all of those skills. So, but this is a good place to start. Look at this list and pick out the five or six that you feel like you do have that you would want to emphasize on your resume. Um, you know, some of them are easier to demonstrate on your resume than others, like friendly and outgoing personality is hard to demonstrate on your resume, but it could be demonstrated through maybe an extracurricular activity, uh, an organization that you belong to, um, you know, recognitions that you've received from others, things like that. But this is just a clue a, a, and a way, a place to start when you're thinking about what kind of content you would like to share on your resume. Anybody have any questions about any of those? Yeah, for someone's first job out of college, is it appropriate to negotiate other factors other than salary, such as benefits like PTO and insurance? I think it is appropriate for you to ask, ask whether or not it is negotiable um, because, you know, it, it's the whole package, right? Like they're the when they're offering making you an offer they're offering you an entire package they're offering you here's the benefits package which would include time off and sick leave and things like that and here's the compensation like the salary that you would be receiving you can negotiate all of those things and you can negotiate your start date um or you know things like that um Benefits are probably harder to negotiate sometimes than other things, but I, I mean, I think it's perfectly appropriate to ask if it is a negotiable. So you can just say, hey, I have some questions about the benefits package and PTO. Is that um, negotiable? I would really like to have a conversation about that and just see where it goes. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask as long as you do it professionally. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those things as we move along. We're going to talk about salary negotiation. Um, in a moment. So here are some of the job search tools that you can use. Um, I hope I hope that you have heard of Handshake. Um, Handshake is an R online platform that is free for all UT Arlington students and alumni to utilize. Um, you can log in with your NetID and password, um, and there are part-time, full-time, internship, and on-campus job opportunities posted in the Handshake platform. It's also where you can go to find things like on-campus interview opportunities, job fairs, networking events with employers. Um, it's where you can go to make an appointment with a career consultant. So there are lots of reasons why you should be logging into Handshake from time to time to, to see what's out there. Um, Indeed.com is another great resource. I really like Indeed.com because you can do a really general keyword search. And sometimes it's really hard to know what exact type of job you're looking for or what job title you should be looking for. Um, but maybe you have a general idea of what kind of job you want. Or maybe you want to start by um, looking for jobs based on a keyword match, like your major or a specific skill that you have. Maybe you have a specific technical skill and you want to type that in and see what comes up when you do an Indeed search. And I really like that about Indeed.com. Um, of course, somebody already mentioned LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great tool for networking as well as job searching. And Interstride is a uh, platform for international students. So if you are an international student, you can utilize Interstride that has job postings and networking opportunities for other international students. Um, and it is a platform that was created by international students for international students. Um, and so that is a free resource that is available to you through the Career Development Center as well. Well. And there are other job search tools out there. Um, you know, these are just a few um, that that I usually recommend to students. But it, again, if there's one that you like that you use a lot and that you think works really well for you, feel free to type it in the chat. One of your fellow attendees might appreciate the suggestion. So 
So I don't think it comes as a huge surprise that 85% of jobs are filled through networking. Um, the statistic varies. Sometimes it's 70, so it's 70 to 85%, depending on who you're talking to. Um, this is a LinkedIn statistic. And so of course, LinkedIn is going to um, maybe raise that number a little bit. But regardless, if it's 70 or 85%, it is a majority of jobs. So if you're spending 100% of your time job seeking online and filling out applications online and 0% of your job search networking, it's going to be harder to find success. Um, and, and, and that's what you're looking for. Now, I'm not saying that people don't find jobs by applying online. Of course they do, or they wouldn't post jobs online anymore. Um, so, of course, they do. And a lot of times, even if you network with someone, you still have to go through the process of applying for the job online. Um, but networking just kind of speeds things up. It gives you access to people or opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise. Um, but networking can be a little intimidating. Um, and a lot of times when I'm talking with a student and they're like, I've applied to 500 jobs online and I'm not getting anywhere and I'm pretty sure it's my resume and I need, just need to get my resume improved. Well, of course, we can look at your resume. We'll be happy to do that. Um, talk to me a little bit about your networking. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of times their faces just fall because networking is not something that anybody really well, I'm not, that's probably not true, but it's a, something that a lot of people find intimidating. So what are some of the reasons why uh, networking might be intimidating? I think sometimes people are, um, it's kind of hard to brag about your connection. So maybe they don't know how to start that initial conversation. You know, yeah. hey, I babysit for, you know, uh, Nikki and she mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, X, Y, and right. Z. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. You feel like you're name dropping <laughs> a little bit or you feel like it's like hard to start the conversation, like you said, and, and uh, make it sound sort of authentic and not cheesy. And I think a lot of people feel like it's cheesy um, or... So I hear that a lot, like, I just don't know how to do it. I don't know how to start the conversation. It just feels awkward and kind of unnatural for me. Um, and then the other, you know, the other one is I don't know anybody. I, I don't even know where I would start. Um, so I have some ideas about that. Um, First of all, maybe reframe or rethink about your definition of networking. Um, networking doesn't always. It is going to events, introducing yourself, reaching out to people and saying, hey, I babysit for Nikki and Nikki recommended that I chat with you about X, Y, and Z. That's a really great, powerful way to network. I mean, it may feel weird to do a name drop like that, but it's great because as soon as I'm like, oh, yeah, Nikki, I know Nikki. I I would be happy to talk with you. It just sort of softens the, you know, the introduction and opens a door. But there are lots of other things that you can consider to be networking. Um, for example, at UTA, there are events going on all the time. There are fun, huge events. There's athletics. There's programs like this. There's job fairs. There are information tables. Like we have employers on campus all the time in the College of Business or in Netterman Hall or in the UC with a booth set up ready to talk to you and um, share a little bit about their organization. There's information sessions and I mean just so many different types of events and one of the benefits of being a college student is that it kind of makes people have a different I guess, attitude about helping you. Everybody wants to help the college kids, you know, get, to help them get their foot in the door. And when employers or companies are coming here, then they're already taking time out of their day to be here. If you don't go talk to them, then they're wasting their time. So you're doing them a favor by walking up to them at the table and say, hey, that, thanks so much for being here. I've heard of your company before. Um, what can you tell me about, you know, uh, 
the job opportunities that you have or whatever you say. Or if you go to an event where you had a guest speaker that was from an organization, maybe um, send them a little thank you email afterwards or walk up to them after it's over and shake their hand and thank them for being there. Um, those kinds of connections and moments can happen organically and be really powerful. Um, send them a message. Like I said, thank you, you know, a thank you email. Hey, I really enjoyed meeting you at the job fair, you know, in April. And um, I um, I really enjoyed our conversation about blah, blah, blah. And I'd really love to um, learn more about how I can join your organization or how I can apply for jobs at your organization. Or send them a, a connection message on LinkedIn. Basically the same thing, but I'd love to continue our discussion. You know, I'd love to be connected with you on LinkedIn. Um, that's a really great way to connect with people as well. And then reach out to people, reach out to professors, coworkers, the mailman, you know, your friends. I mean, like a lot of times networking is just about having conversations. Let people know what you're looking for, what you're up to, um, what it is, like what goals you have um, in the moment um, so that you can get a better idea of. So they have a better idea of how they can help you. Um, you never know who's going to be connected to someone that can kind of help get your foot in the door or open a door for you to have a conversation. Um, one of the things that I really like are informational interviews. So, you know, as a college student, you can, you know, find someone on LinkedIn or find somebody in one of your classes or something, you know, someone that you know and say, hi, um, I was looking at your profile on LinkedIn and I saw that you graduated from UTA and, you know, I was really impressed with the work that you've done since you've graduated and I'm about to graduate and I would love to sit down and chat with you about your um, about your career path and, and any advice or tips that you have for me that could help me to be successful. And then just sit down and have a conversation with someone. I'd be happy to buy you a cup of coffee or whatever the case may be and just hear what they have to say about, you know, um, you know, their trajectory, their career path, ask them some questions. I mean, you don't have to come right out and say, also, can you hire me? Because they know that you're looking for a job. And if they like you and, you know, you, you know, that can be understood. Um, and then after that conversation is over, you can say, you know, I really learned a lot from you. This was really beneficial for me. Is there anybody else that you would recommend that I speak to? And they can be like, oh, yeah, actually, I I know somebody that works over at this company that might, you know, be a good resource for you. Um, and you can either they can either reach out and say, hey, I'll I'll do a, an introduction, um, a handoff or, you know, you can name drop it. Oh, I spoke with so and so and they recommended that I speak with you and it can open a door that way as well. We have mentorship platforms on um on campus, we have one called Mav Mentors. I believe the College of Business has one as well. Um, and so their mentorship platforms are another great way to build your network, um, to meet people, have conversations with people, learn from people that are out there in the workforce that can also then become advocates for you as you do your job search. Any questions or comments about anything so far? OK, I'm going to keep going, but if you have a question, feel free to type it in the chat. Um, so here's some uh, more networking tips. Um, you know, before you go and meet with someone or as you're deciding maybe what organizations or you would want to go work for or join, um, do your research. Know a little bit about them, know a little bit about the organization. Um, the more knowledgeable you can be when you're having a conversation with someone, um, the more impressed they're going to be. So if you know something about their organization or like, oh, I, I, I saw in your LinkedIn profile that you did this when you were at UTA, they would be like, oh my gosh, that's, that's really impressive that you did your research. And it also can help you to know what would be the best types of questions to ask, what would be the best types of um, pieces of information to share about yourself um, to help you to um, tailor that and make sure that you're getting the most out of that networking moment. Um, prepare your 30 second commercial or your elevator pitch. This is something that is always going to be beneficial to have in your back pocket. 
um, so that when you're talking with someone, you already kind of know what you're going to say about yourself. Like, hello, my name is Nikki Dickens, and I'm a student at UTA, and I'm, you know, majoring in marketing. Um, this is what I just completed an internship doing blah, blah, blah. And I hope in the future to be able to do blah, blah, blah. And I'd really love to chat with you for uh, a moment about your career path or tell me something about your job, your career path, your whatever. Um, so you can just have that ready to go. And it's, it can be a great conversation starter. And it really helps to give an impression of confidence. Um, so you want to make sure that when you're having a conversation with someone um, at a networking event or in an informational interview, that you're managing your time well, that you're getting the most out of that conversation. Um, it's not generally going to be a lengthy conversation. I mean, an informational interview could be maybe 30 minutes or maybe an hour, but most of the time you're going to want to make sure that you're using your time well um, and maximizing on that time, but not monopolizing or taking um, over someone's time and making it so that they're uh, being inconvenienced by you or that you're keeping other people from being able to talk with that person. So be professional and polite always, even if the conversation's not going well or the person's being rude to you or you've realized that that's not an, a, a person that you'd want to work with, um, continue to be professional and polite. Um, I don't want to take up more of your time. I'm sure that you've got a lot of other people that you need to speak with today, but um, thank you so much uh, for talking with me. I enjoyed meeting you um, and then just move on. But if you are excited and you are talking to someone and they're like, oh, this job opportunity just came up, ask for the next steps. I would love to apply for that job. What would my next step be? Um, where, where would I need to go to apply for that job? Is there someone else that you recommend that I talked to? Anything like that. Um, and then follow up. Thank them for the conversation, for their time. Um, let them know if you have taken a next step. Um, so that they can keep an eye out for your application, things like that. So the communication needs to continue after the meeting. So after you've spoken with someone, introduced yourself to someone, say at a job fair or other type of event, um, make sure that you follow up with more afterwards so that you can keep that dialogue open. Hopefully that makes sense. Does anybody have any questions about that? So this might seem really basic, but just some basic information about how to introduce yourself to people. Um, I actually had someone at a job fair, one of the employers come up to me once um, and say, you should really teach a workshop on how to shake hands properly because um, I'm not very impressed with the handshakes I've been getting today. And um, it seems kind of silly that someone would care that much about a handshake. But I do want to emphasize that nonverbal communication is um, a part of the process and you're doing your job search. So in an interview, a job interview, a networking situation, any of that, you want to smile at people. You want to make eye contact with people. And if you are able to shake hands with them, if you're not uncomfortable, I know that handshaking, you know, can be uncomfortable sometimes, especially if you're concerned about germs or, you know, things like that. Um, that can make a strong impression and communicate confidence non-verbally. So do your best to communicate your confidence non-verbally um, in a way that you feel confident and comfortable. And then introduce yourself, right? We talked about 30 second commercial, but even if you're going into a, an, any kind of meeting with anybody, give them some kind of an introduction. Hello, I'm Nikki Dickens. I work at the Career Development Center at UTA. Give them some context so that they know who you are and they can place you into that, um, into that organization or whatever the situation might be. And then think about when you're going into this job search process, when you're putting your resume together, when you're preparing for job interviews, when you're creating your elevator pitch, what do you want people to know about you? Um, and I, we call that creating your brand. Um, you want this brand to be authentic. You want it to be real, but you also want it to be very positive. So what do you want people to know about you as you're going through your job search process? Um, you know, a great place to start is by asking yourself some questions. What 
ideas? Like what, how would other people describe you to a potential employer? You could ask your friends, your classmates, your, um, you know, your supervisor, your professors, like if someone were to come to you um, uh, uh, and ask you questions about me, how would you, what would you just say about me? What, how would you describe me? You know, and think about what they say and whether or not that's what you want to own and what parts you want to own and what parts maybe you don't want to own um, and say, so maybe they'll say, well, I would say that you're collaborative, you're a good problem solver, you're an excellent communicator, you know, things like that. And then you're like, great, that's just add that to your list of things that you could possibly say about yourself. And then what kinds of things do you enjoy or get excited to talk about? You know, maybe there are certain aspects of what you're studying or things that you're doing in your campus involvement or your work experiences that you just love talking about, that you're excited about, um, that can, you know, kind of add some energy to the conversation. And then what are your skills or areas of expertise? Is there anything that you feel you're particularly good at? Um, and then what are you proud of? Have you done something in one of your classes? Was there a project that you thought went really well? Um, a, you know, something that you did at work that you're really proud of? Those are the kinds of things that add energy to the conversation. And one of the things that employers say they remember at a networking event or at a job interview is the energy that you bring. And when your face lights up because you're talking about something that you're proud of or that you're excited about or that you feel confident about, then that's where that energy is going to come from. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be really bubbly or really energetic, um, but just that you have a lot of positive energy as you're having this conversation with somebody. So that would be a good place to start when you're building your brand. But again, it does need to be authentic because you don't want um, someone to be asked about you and for them to be like, what? No, that's not how I would describe that person, right? So you do need to make sure that it's validating. Like you can validate it through examples um, or through references. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so some resources that are available to help you that the Career Development Center has um, that you could take advantage of. We do have a virtual interview program called Interview Stream um, that you can utilize whenever you would like. It's free. Um, it's a pretty good chance that you've used it as part of a classroom assignment um, in one of your classes. Um, you can also do a face-to-face -face mock interview with someone here at the Career Development Center. You can actually schedule an appointment for a practice interview, and we will ask you questions, and you will answer them, and then we'll provide you with feedback. And our goal is always just to kind of help you build on the interview skills that you already have so that you can feel even more confident going into uh, future interview opportunities. Um, handshake, we've already talked about. Um, there's our website, uta.edu slash careers, which is where you can go to get all kinds of sample resumes, cover letters, interview tips. Um, there's so much information on our um, uh, on our website that I would recommend that you check that out. And then again, we have career spot drop-ins every Monday through Friday from one to four. You can come in with no appointment needed and, and talk with a career coach. You can ask general questions about your job search, your LinkedIn profile, your handshake account, your resume, your cover letter, um, and they will be able to help you with that or put you in um, contact with someone from the office who can help you. Okay. So talking about job interviewing very quickly, um, uh, some things that I would recommend that you do to prepare for job interviews um, is making sure, again, that you have all of the documents that you feel like you're going to need, um, either available electronically or printed out if you're going into an in-person interview. Um, make sure that you... Um, have the logistics worked out. Um, for example, if you're going to an in-person interview um, on site, you wanna make sure that you know how to get there. You wanna give yourself plenty of time to get there. Um, I would wanna know what the parking situation is. Do I need to find my own parking in like a nearby parking garage or is there parking on site? Um, do I need a parking pass? Things like that. 
Um, I would want to know uh, exactly where in the building the office is located that I need to go to. Any any logistical information that I can get ahead of time is going to make me feel more comfortable about that situation. Um, if it's a phone interview, um, I would recommend just making sure that you have a quiet place where you have good cell reception, uh, where you're not going to be interrupted or disturbed. Um, and you can have, you know, documents in front of you, a copy of your job description, things like that, that can help you to, um, you know, refresh your memory about some of the things that you might want to say during the interview. Um, and then for a virtual interview, make sure that you have your quiet space, that you know what platform is going to be used for the interview. If you can, and it's free to download the app version of that platform rather than the web version, that's better. It's usually more functional that way. Um, and then have a backup plan. What happens if your Wi-Fi crashes or your computer messes up? Can you dial in? Do you have your cell phone right next to you so that you can um, kind of switch over um, quickly to the um, the phone version of the interview if you needed to. Um, so, you know, just make sure that you've got your um, background set and everything before you log into that interview. And then you want to make sure that you know the company. Know as much as you can about the company. It'll help you to understand maybe um, what kinds of questions they might ask you or what kinds of things you might want to emphasize about your own experience and background and how you connect with the company. So what are their values? What is their mission? What is their vision? What kinds of projects do they do? Um, have they been in the news lately for a good reason? Um, you know, things like that can be really beneficial. What do you know about their culture? What do you know about their... Um, your, their inclusive practices, all of those things can help inform you and prepare you for the interview. Um, you want to make sure that you know yourself. Obviously, you've got to be able to talk about yourself the entire time, and you need to be able to do it confidently. So what examples do you have to share from your past experiences or from your educational background? Um, what are what are the reasons why you think they should hire you? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, how are you going to answer those questions? And then you can try to identify the questions ahead of time. If you go to like Indeed or Glassdoor, sometimes you can get questions there. Um, and you can also um, look at the job description and see if you can kind of guess what types of questions they might ask based on the qualifications of the job or based on the role definition. So if it says things like this person will be um, collaborating with cross-functional teams to provide quarterly reports, then you probably need to have some examples prepared that demonstrate your teamwork your ability to collaborate well with others, your ability to provide reports or information, things like that, right? So it can kind of start to give you some clues about what types of questions, what kinds of strengths you might want to emphasize. And then practice. You can practice. I've already told you some different ways that you can practice. Practice with friends, family, in front of the mirror. Um, just make sure that you are practicing so that you can um, get comfortable talking about yourself because that can be really hard and awkward for a lot of people to, to be able to speak confidently about yourself without feeling weird about it or self-conscious about it, um, you know, um, is really important. The more you practice, the more confident you will be doing that. And then during the interview, um, you know, make sure that you are prepared to provide those ex examples to answer the different types of questions that you might get asked. And one of the most common types of interview questions is behavioral interview questions, which is asking questions like, tell me about a time when you had to... Um, deal with a difficult customer and how were you able to resolve that customer's complaint or walk me through a problem that you've solved recently and how what steps you took to solve that problem or things like that so have you been asked questions like that before you can give me a thumbs up Okay. Yeah. So, um, 
So behavioral interview questions are very, very common. And the way that you would want to answer those questions is by providing those examples and making sure that you follow the steps of providing the background or the situation. You might have called, heard them called STAR questions or the STAR method. Um, so STAR is situation, task, action, result. Background, action, result, basically the same thing, but bar. Um, so you want to give the context, like what was going on? And then what action did you take? And that's really important. You don't want to skimp out on letting them know what your thought process was or what you were doing or the choice that you made. And then what was the result or the outcome of the action that you took? So one of the things that I would recommend is that you think about those scenarios ahead of time so that you have an opportunity to kind of review and make sure you have the details all straightened out and um, just so that you have sort of a catalog in your mind of different examples that you can share during an interview. And then um, make sure that you do kind of make, make sure that the answer sort of fits the job that you're going to be doing, but that doesn't mean that the example has to be exactly related to the type of job that you're going to be doing. So if you're going to apply for a job in um, a marketing firm and you don't have any marketing experience in a, in a, mar you know, in a marketing setting, but you've done the skill, the example should follow and be relevant to the skill that you would need to do the job. Um, and always just pause before you start answering the question and ask yourself, like, why are they asking me this question? And what do I need to tell them about myself? Like, what do they need to know about me right now? And if you can't think of a specific example, because sometimes it can be hard when you're on the spot, then you could say something like, you know, I can't think of a specific time when that has happened, but this is what I do normally, or this is how I would handle the situation if it came up. Or, you know, I've never disagreed with my supervisor before, but I believe that it's because I approach my relationship with my supervisor like this. So you still want to be able to provide them with details and information. Does anybody have any questions about how to answer interview questions? If you do, go ahead and type them in the chat. We're going to talk a little bit about salary negotiation, and that's what we're going to wrap up with today. Um, so salary negotiation is part of the job search process, right? Um, almost every person I know that hires people is expecting a salary negotiation to happen. So it is perfectly fine for you to negotiate your salary, your benefits package, whatever it is that you would like to negotiate. But it can be scary and it can feel really weird, especially the first time you do it, um, especially if you're like, well, I'm just an entry level candidate. Like I shouldn't I shouldn't negotiate my salary. Right. Well, why not? You don't have to. You, it does. It can be done in a very polite and professional way. So the first thing that I would recommend is that you research what it is appropriate to ask for. Like, what is the salary range for the position that you are interviewing for? Um, is it? Um, you know, and I would look at multiple resources like salary.com, um, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics has salary information. Um, there are other websites, indeed.com, glassdoor.com, where you can get some salary information. And I would just kind of look at like, generally speaking, what's like a common salary range that you think is reasonable? Like what's the mid range? Like, is it 70 to $80,000 a year? Then that's your range, right? Now, if they ask you, what is your salary expectation? It is perfectly fine for you to come back and say, well, what is what is the salary range for this position? Or what do you, what is the normal uh, rate for, you know, new hires in this role? And see if they'll answer the question for you. Salary transparency is becoming a lot more common. Um, so, but you do want to have a number in your back pocket just in case. So you can say, well, based on, my research or based on you know what I've seen from similar positions, um, my salary expectations would be within seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year. But I'm happy to hear whatever offer you would like to make, right? So you can say something like that if you want to. Um, 
And then you do want to make sure that if you are like if they if they make you an offer and they say, hey, we want to hire you and we want to pay you sixty five thousand dollars a year and we want you to start on April 22nd um, and you can say, great, thank you so much. Can you go ahead and send that offer letter over to me um, and I will review it and I can give you an answer by the end of the week or when do you need to, to know or when can you know when do you need my answer and then review everything, make sure you understand everything and then reach back out and say hey i have some questions about the offer um when would be a good time for us to chat about that or um i have some questions about the offer um i'm really excited about joining your team but um i i i have some some questions about the benefits or about pto or about the salary um is that negotiable? Is that something that we can talk about? Whatever you want to talk about or however you want to introduce that. And then just say, you know, again, thank you so much for the offer. I've been doing some research and I feel like based on what's your leverage, right? Based on the fact that I have already got, you know, a year of experience in this field or I have this extra certification or whatever the case may be. Um, I believe that I was hoping that we could have a conversation about getting my salary closer to 70 to $80,000 a year um, and then see what they say. They might say, no, I'm sorry, we can't get, we can't do better than 65, but in six months we can um, have a conversation about a possible raise or something like whatever, whatever, right? So they're gonna have a counter offer to your offer, counter offer. And then you just decide, are you accepting that or no? And then if you accept it, if they say, no, I'm sorry, we can't do 65, we can only do 65, that's our max. But uh, I, I, and then you can say, you know, thank you so much for being honest. I appreciate it. I'd like to go ahead and accept the offer anyway and then sign the offer letter and that's fine. Or they can say, well, actually we can get you to 68 now and we can revisit in a year. I mean, whatever it is. And then you just renegotiate those terms. You ask them to write you a new offer letter with all of the terms that you've negotiated. And then that's the offer letter that you sign. Um, it can be awkward to have this conversation. So practice you know, write out a script if that makes you feel more comfortable and just kind of practice saying it out loud. Um, if you want to start the conversation via email, that's fine. But a lot of times a phone conversation is a little bit preferred. Um, and then make sure that you're looking at the whole job offer, not just the salary, not just the benefits, not just the PTO, but what is the structure and the culture of the organization? Do they have professional development opportunities? Do they pay for you to go to conferences? Um, do you, um, do they have a promotion ladder like a, you know, that you can see opportunities for growth um, within that organization? Whereas this other offer is paying you more, but there's less opportunities for growth. Like what is, where, what are your values? What are your goals? What is it that you need out of the work that you're going to be doing? And make sure that you're including that in the decision making process. Does anybody have any questions about that? All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Um, hopefully, I, I know I gave you a lot of information. Hopefully, some of it was helpful for you. Um, if you would like to connect with us, um, we are on the social media platforms, LinkedIn, higher, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, just find us on those platforms. You can also connect with us via our website, uta.edu slash careers. It's a portal to all of our resources, including Handshake and MAV mentors. And um, so hopefully we will see you in our office. Um, we look forward to engaging with you and helping you in your job search. Um, I can stick around if anybody does have any questions um, for a couple of minutes. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for your time today, and I hope that you have a great afternoon. Thank you so much for hosting us. Uh, we appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, it looks like everybody's logged off. So 
Have a great afternoon, everybody, and I will see you later. Thank you so much, Nikki. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.